So Nirma scores there another point from throwing zone two, and so does MIT Pune. It is net to net Priyamada. Hi, I am Paras Avnani. I am from Mechanical Department, SEMFI. I am the team leader of Team India Robocon and I am responsible for the design of our robots and coordination of our team. Hi, I'm Harshwadhan Singh Sisodia from Mechanical Engineering 5th semester. I'm the manual operator of Team India Robocon. I'm also responsible for the fabrication of our robots. Hello, I am Divyan Shuta. I am currently studying in 5th semester Electronics and Communication Engineering. I am the operator of Autonomous Robot and I am currently heading and looking after the electronics section of my team. So after the problem statement was released, we analyzed it, discussed on it, and then divided into number of tasks. Task one, ta it was to design the shuttlecocks. We had to design the shuttlecocks to make them fit into weight and size constraint. Task two, we had to load the shuttlecocks from the rack, avoiding any fouls. Task three, it was to transfer the shuttlecocks from manual robot to autonomous robot. Task four was to make the autonomous robot shoot the shuttlecocks into different zones. Task 5, it was the most important task out of all. Task 5 was to make, the, make our bots move faster so that we could achieve wrong way in minimum time. So after we have divided into tasks, we were confident enough that we could finish in minimum time and find the solutions to all the problems. Our university has state-of-the-art manufacturing equipments. We order some of the components through a local market which is very rich and sometimes we order some components through online stores.
for the completion of the task, we went for three wheel omni drive for our autonomous robot. It gives us better maneuverability and control over the robot. The next important thing was careful selection of sensors. As you can see, we have used encoders. They give us the distance that the bot has traveled so that we can use that distance to calculate acceleration and deceleration. The next thing we used, line sensor, as you can see here. We have used line sensor so that we could get the reference of line so that we could know where we have to shoot the ball. Okay, so the next thing was the use of actuators. As you can see, we have used solenoid walls so that we could actuate pneumatic pistons. This is our autonomous robot. In this, our main challenge was to shoot the balls. And while shooting the balls, we came up uh, with many mechanisms like uh, pneumatic pistons, motors. Finally, we came to the conclusion that shooting the ball with pneumatic pistons is most appropriate way. And you can see here, the shooter arm is pivoted about a pin joint and the balls uh, are tied at the end of the shooter arm. This is a normal shuttlecock. Look at the shooting mechanism we used. So, while prototyping the shooter mechanism, we noticed one problem. The problem was the oscillations of the ball. Now, how to counteract that? We designed a gripper for that problem. As you can see, the gripper is a simple example of a four bar linkage. Let's have a look at the gripping mechanism. This is our manual robot. The main task of the manual robot is to take the balls from the rack and transfer it to the autonomous robot. Now, while doing the task, we uh, tried to take the whole rack into the robot, but later we faced some difficulties and we thought that we could take the balls instead of the whole rack. And then we went through this mechanism for that purpose. Now, here as you can see that these are the latches which act only one-sided. So, the ball can initially go through them, but will not be able to return back. So, in this way, the bot will go inside the rack and take the balls, so the balls will not go outside again. After loading, we have to transfer the ball to the autonomous robot. Here is the mechanism. We use the piston here to actuate this compartment up down there. After that, the ball will be down due to the gravity. Then we will use the piston back here for the transfer using the latches. By this way, the ball will come down due to gravity and will be loaded into the automatic ball. After the nationals, to achieve wrong bay in minimum time, we have made our autonomous robot faster and moreover, we have also reduced the distance that it has to travel. To make our autonomous robot faster, we have implemented new algorithms to achieve better maneuverability and control at high speeds. During the nationals, we had three shooter arms and for the preparation of internationals, we converted our manual robot to autonomous robot. While converting this robot, we were facing the issues in transit as we were uh, transferring the shuttlecocks during the transit. So, we reduce the number from 3 to 1. We are varying the pressures of the shooting arm using the PPR. In the nationals, we are gripping the fringes of the ball. But after the nationals, now we are gripping the ball itself. In nationals, we use two racks. One rack was for the normal shuttlecock and the other was for the no golden shuttlecock. Now, we have changed the compartment into one only. This will be used for both normal and golden. Here, we have used a turntable so that we can maximize the bot speed and we do not have to change the orientation of the robot for the better drive of the robot.
after the nationals, as the rules allowed us, the first thing we did was to turn this robot in, from manual to autonomous. So during the national, the, this, this robot was completely in the operator's hand. But now as we, we have turned it into autonomous, we have applied a wall follower mechanism here so that the bot has to travel in straight line so it can achieve that distance in minimum time. This wall follower also helped us to remove the alignment problem between the manual and the autonomous robot during the transfer. To reduce the time, we have ensured that the ball is transferred while the manual robot is in transit so that it doesn't have to stop.